welcome to round four of the SCP show brought to you this week by our friends at crackerwines.com.au. Uh, east around the corner, make sure you get on there and, uh, and order yourself some good wines ahead of the holiday period. But back for, uh, for round four with these two guys, we've got Damon on my right and I've got Cameron on my left. How do we go, guys? What a great week it was, Paige. What an absolutely it was a good fantastic week, for you. week. It was a good week because last week, of course, people will remember I had the chocolate hat. But uh, this week I've come out and uh, continued the trend Coach of, uh, of the week. good old Cameron Wood. Yeah. And, uh, it's um, actually Mick, guys. You, you'll get it eventually. I know I'm new. But, yeah, uh, yeah, we'll get there. But continue the trend Woodsy, of Woodsy, Woodsy, um, nice. the person gets the chocolate hat of the week, the next week gets the top score. So that was me this week with 2-3-2-3. Two, three, two, three. And I'd just like to tell Joyce, who isn't joining us uh, on this week's episode, post the same question to him like he did me last week. How does it feel to be horrible? Because he scored 2-1-3-1. <laughs> And is this week's Chocolate Hat of the Week karma? Chocolate Hat of the Week, but what did you get this week? Talk about cracking a wine. Um, <laughs> I got 2,271, so it was quite a healthy score. Not bad. A few uh, overperforming premiums, a few underperforming premiums. Uh, and it's the year of the mid-prices. I've said it all along. They are killing it. Absolutely they are, they're killing doing it. well. And myself, I got 2,222. This week, so not a bad effort, but there's still that's, plenty that's of. That's Richie Beno's uh, uh, score, isn't it? It is. Isn't it? Two for two hundred and twenty-two. <laughs> it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Bit of a doing impersonations yeah. on the show. Anyway, yeah, that's um, thing. moving well, on. I think we have got our very first segment coming on, and uh, yes. I think you're kicking us off, aren't you? I will kick us off with my little man, who I've had in the team the whole time, based on your recommendations. Yes. You two say, saying he's going to be on, the next Gaz and everything. Oh, Tom Libra. Torre at a 575,900 and pick him up for. So he's not cheap, but his average is 114.67 at the moment. And he's got GWS Carlton and Adelaide in the next three. So three uh, pretty uh, mm. scorable games, I guess you could say. And, and I was quite happy with his performance on the weekend. Boosted my score very nicely, so thank you for that, Libba. Yeah, another player who boosted my score was uh, Shane Mumford. I actually traded him into my side, quite luckily Master enough. Master stroke, well done. It was. It was yeah. a bit of luck, though, because Ryder did injure himself, so yeah. it was a nice little upgrade there to uh, Shane Mumford. And I think if you had this guy from the start of the season, he would be... One of the players, I think. Talk about cash money. Hashtag mm. cash money. He's gone up 69,000. Yeah, lovely. In a week. That and he nice. scored one... How much did he score on the week? And he was averaging 151 anyway, and uh, he's priced at 565. or something. Yeah, something I think like it was, yeah, 160-ish. Yeah, he's priced at 565, um, 400. So I think this week he's about to go up probably another 30,000, maybe even more, because his break-even is in the negative. I think from memory is about negative 13. Yep. And his next three, he's got the Bulldogs, Adelaide and Gold Coast. And, uh, it's going to go bonkers again. He's going to go yeah. crazy. Jesus, can he sustain that? Mm. Let's see. Callan Ward is the next one. 551,800. This guy, if you had picked him up at the start of the season, um, along with Chalor, along with Dion Prestia, you'd have a pretty good scoring oh, team yeah. at the moment. And you'd be uh, licking your lips because you'd have a fair bit of money in the bank as well. Uh, averaging 125, like I said. Next three... Western Bulldogs, Adelaide, and the Gold Coast. So three, again, like very it. scorable teams. So let's see how he goes. Well, uh, bucking the trend of a few underpriced or speculative um, premiums, so to speak, uh, Joel Selwood, he fooled us all with that early season or interrupted pre-season injury with that, um, that leg injury. But, I mean, everyone pretty much jumped it off after they thought, you know, that's it. He's had yeah. a delayed start to the year. His lowest score was on the weekend against Collingwood, which was 138, which is, that says a lot about exactly how not only uh, Geelong, but <laughs> Selwood, the captain himself, Just started the year. Proves that Collingwood's such a great team to uh, keep him to a low score. And yeah. look, I, I reckon it's the start of his downfall. Stay away well, from Well, he's, he's got a break even in 90, so very doable by his <laughs> lofty standards. Uh, call, West Coast, Hawthorne and Port Adelaide to come. So very, and they're at home at uh, at Skill Stadium this weekend. So Sleepy Hollow, yeah. he does his best work down there, Salwood. So if you've got him this week, sneaky chance for the captain. He, I think. he did end the season in blistering form, as we know, uh, taking up to Gaz in the brown line, yeah. uh, finishing just short. And yeah, he's Goal carried kicking midfielder now. Carried that form through to this season. So big things to come That's for, for Salwood, I think. Exactly. And uh, our next segment, what are we yeah. having? Little bubble boys, mm. we've called them. 
The kids yeah. that are on the bubble, they've played two games and they're ready to go up in price. A um, couple of guys you can jump on now before they do start to move up and I think you're kicking yourself, aren't you? I am indeed. And uh, first player we're looking at is Josh Kelly. Now, uh, mm. won the Rising Star this week. And um, I think he's, he's going to be finishing right up there in the Rising Star Award and uh, could potentially fun. take it out. Um, he's 212-300. He's averaging 82.5 with a break-even of negative 47. Lovely. Next three weeks, of course, he's got the Dogs, Adelaide and Gold Coast. And I think he's, he's going to smash it. Well, I he's, got, oh, he's, he's projected to go up around that fifty dollars to $60,000 mark this week. So if you're looking for the quick grab of cash... Um, and especially if you've got, we're going to be speaking in a bit more in depth in regards to trading this week later on. But he's someone to really look into, I yeah, think. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm tossing up between him and Pollock. So uh, <laughs> who's going to be better? Yeah, yeah well, that's the question. Another bubble boy to have a look at as well. And uh, a lot of defence uh, lines seem to be okay. But this guy, uh, K. Cole Jackney. $197,300 with an average of 60.5, had his best game on the weekend. Um, he's got a break even of minus 11, and next three he faces Hawthorne, Melbourne, and GWS. So I think we're going to see a lot more of him, and yeah. he looks now a lot more likely to stay out of that Sunfest, I think. He is looking very at home in that back line. He kicked a goal on the weekend as well, so he's mm. pushing forward a bit. Um, really someone to consider, but... The, the headaches are usually in, in the forward line at the moment coming into this round, so defence isn't really a huge one. But if the cash is there, grab it if you need well, it. And I grabbed the cash. I'm just going to say yeah. that. He <laughs> but, was my trade. I mean, talking about trading anyway, it's going to be a huge week because there are dilemmas all over the park for everyone. And so we're setting it up this week is our trade debate. We're going to look at players that are a bit sus and ones that we can probably bring in to help ease that, that pain and then also increase our value as well as our scoring capacity. But to kick things off, Gary Rowan, a.k.a. Matthew Joyce, um, $176,000 he is. He actually dropped $200 in price, if you can believe oh it. Uh, he's got an average of 35, but his break-even is currently higher than his average at 40 this week. Uh, and they play North Melbourne at the SCG, so they'll be happy to be home this weekend. Uh, and they've got Fremantle and Melbourne thereafter. Um, but look, if you're looking to trade him out like I am as well, someone to keep an eye on is Alex Basolo, the Pies. First game back this year, which was 73 points he scored. And he's got a break even of minus 25, so he's only played the one game at the moment. He is somebody to keep in mind. Um, Collingham play Richmond, North Melbourne and Essendon. And definitely considering they're playing him off the half-back line. Yeah, yeah, that new positional change yeah. is something to <coughs> And you see that favor. time and time again, mm. where they bring a, a forward. A, a, he's a good forward as well, and they're bringing him into the back line and potentially he can be getting some big scores for your team. I really. like him. I, I think he's, he's worth a sneaky look, especially considering there really isn't much else on offer, but we will go into that later on. Yeah, I think the only thing with him is that, of course, the injury troubles he had last year. I'm a little bit worried that they might may return, but of course we've got this week to look at him. I think if he, if he passes that test, take the gamble on because yeah, I think if he scores similar to what he produced on the weekend, you've got to have a look at him. There's not many other options out there. No, not at no. all. So definitely look at him. Next player to um, that we're analysing, of course, is uh, Viv Mishi. Now he he was the one who had the axe fall on his neck. You could say. Yeah. <laughs> um, Literally. In the, the game, yeah, in the game against uh, <laughs> after the game against West West Coast, where they got absolutely pummeled, he was a victim of uh, the omissions there. And unfortunately for him, in the VFL, broke his jaw and he's set to be out for three to four weeks. So you'd be looking to trade him out. And spoke before of Josh Kelly. So Viv Mish is, is priced at one seventy two six hundred. Be a nice little upgrade to Josh Kelly. He's only priced at two twelve three hundred. So what's that? You know, forty grand. If you've got that in the kit. Put that towards think so. that trade and do it, I think, because Josh Kelly, he, he looks like an up-and-comer. You're He's looking at an extra, what, 40000 bucks, if that, which most yeah. people would have on their bench anyway. So, I mean, I like him. I think he's not. He's, he's going to stay in that side, and I think more so as well. He's going to stay out of the sub vest. And mm. considering how good he is by foot, his disposal efficiency is fantastic. It's through the roof. It's, it is elite, yeah. and he's only played a couple yeah. of games. So, I think for him and GWS's draw... Get on him, I yep. think. Get on him. He's, he's gonna he's gonna reflect what uh, I think what Dom Tyson's been doing as yep. well. That sort of scoring. Mm. All right, you guys are convinced me. I'm getting him. <laughs> <laughs> it's done. I'm, I'm actually serious. Um, Dale Thomas, 
is the next one, and you can, uh, he's sitting at 355,700. Average of 78, which is quite pathetic. Yeah, not great by Daisy's standards. I've never been a fan, um, <laughs> even though he was my favourite player for years. We're, we're, we're disgruntled mad <laughs> um, pipe supporters. <laughs> Break even of 24, which is not too bad. You know, you'll still go up in price. We'll score the um, game, but who cares? Um, <laughs> next three: Melbourne Western Bulldogs and the West Coast Eagles. Three very difficult, uh, very difficult games for Carlton. Because tips is not. Let's, let's face it; they're no good. This is going to be a blockbuster um, this week, just as a Carlton. <laughs> anyway, that's get down there. That's enough bad mouthing Daisy for me until about. Five minutes later. Jackson McRae is the one that we're tipping you get in for Daisy. Now, had you done that a couple of rounds ago, you wouldn't be paying the extra because he was cheaper than Daisy. He was. But now, now he's overtaken him. Now he's completely overtaken him. He'll continue to do that. He's going to average 106, break even of nine. Next three games, GWS, Carlton, the worst team in the game, and Adelaide. So, uh... <laughs> so... so um, Keep a straight face. You're quite good at you that. Can, yeah. If you've got the 33 grand on the bench, you can upgrade... Daisy straight to McRae yeah. and then also grab McRae's obviously premium scoring and yeah. his his low break even and now's the week to do I, it. I think now it is if you've been if you've been pondering it if you've really been thinking about bringing McRae into your side but you're just not really convinced some people don't think he's going to be a long term mainstay but yeah. you've got to look at it in the sense as well is that the quickest way to get up to your premiums is the best way to do it yeah but something mm. to consider. Definitely. I've got McRae and uh, I would uh, endorse a lot of people to get on him. And the one other option, obviously, is the one that I took. That I, I feel oh. like it's the safe option, and that's Liam Shields. Moving so on. This guy just, is... Just keep that in mind. Uh, you know, number 6,000 in the, in the thing. For now. Uh, for now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Soon anyway. to be 1,000. Anyway. Yes. Yeah, next one. Next one. Nick Nat, that's yours, oh, Nick Nat, I'd be speaking about Nick Nat. I don't know about Nick Nat. $479,300. His average only 73 with a break even of 99 this week. Um, again, when we talk about players, the biggest warning sign and the reason to trade is if a player's break even is higher than their average. That is a big no-no. You have to look at that. He's got Geelong and Port Adelaide and Carlton this week and will be up against it against all three, I think. But... More so to trade him out for is Sam Jacobs. And I know this time last year we were actually slagging him off in Andy's bedroom yeah. back in the old days of SCP. And we, and we said we'd never touch him again, but you cannot uh, deny Jacobs' form. Uh, he's currently $468,000 with a break even of 90, oh, sorry, an average of 98 and a break even of 80. Um, faces St Kilda, GWS, and the Bulldogs coming up. Pretty good draw for him. Um, and he, he, look on Nick Nat anyway. He, to me, he doesn't look like he's over that, that groin injury that dogged his 2013 season. I just, I don't know. I'm just not seeing the, the Nick Nat that we know that's flying for those marks. He's pushing forward. He's rucking with you know ferocity. I'm, it's just not there at the moment. And I think if you've got him, he's actually dropped in price. So. Yeah. Now's the best time to offload and just cut your losses, I think. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of uh, media people out there who have been criticising his, his, his lack of marking in games, and I'm not too sure why that is, but... Um, that was one of his, his biggest... Um, assets, his, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, something to consider, I, I'd be offloading. I mean, if you can upgrade to Mumford, go for it. But if yeah. you're looking for a straight spot, you can go down to Jacobs. He hasn't lost his hair, has he? No, he hasn't yeah, lost no. his hair, no. So where's his power gone? I don't know, he's lost his power. The next player we're looking at is Josh Caddy, and I think he's, a, he's been a nightmare for a lot of people who have picked him up from the start of the season. And luckily, I wasn't tempted to get him. Um, I'll, I'll admit, I was tempted a little bit, but... Um, I never gave him a look in. Yeah, the fact that he... he gave him a little look. Just a little, little look. Yeah. Just a little look. The fact that he's got the history of, the, history of uh, the vest um, yeah. kind of swayed me against him. But yeah, for those people that do have him, he's only averaging 68 and uh, he's got a break even of 59. And, and based on that alone, I think you just you have to consider maybe just pushing him out. Give him the flick. Give him the flick for someone else. And that someone else could be Jackson Merritt. He's priced at 332 to 100. He's averaging, believe it or not, 103. Ridiculous. 103. My man. My man. Next three teams. Oh, you've got him, don't you, Mick? Yes. I mean, Cameron. Next three <laughs> are teams that Essendon face. They've got Frio, which is a tough ass, but I reckon it's going to be a pretty close game. Essendon will win that, mark my words. And uh, Frio got a few out, so um, he could perform in that game still. Then they've got St Kilda and Collingwood, of course, on Anzac Day. So 
I think, you know, as a point of difference, he's only owned by 10,000 mm. people. We're going to speak Consider about it. him in depth, though. Yeah. yeah. Coming up, but he's, you, you're on him and you're very, very happy with yourself. He's one of my golden eggs. Who did you, he, he could be a genuine super coach star. Who did you trade out for him? Who did I trade? Oh, um, was it Higgins? No, it wasn't Higgins. It was Ben Kennedy. Oh, it was a very good trade. Yep. Uh, yep. Got injured. What? Did he get injured? No, he wore the no, best, best first game and he got dropped. He's a very good player, very uh, Well, that's, a, that's a master stroke. Well yeah. done by you. Thank but you. moving into our next segment, and as we do each week, we have the big <laughs> Q. And we ask the question of a discussion topic that you guys have asked us to discuss. And this week it is... Is Adam Trelaw the real deal? Now, we have seen him go absolutely bonkers over the first three rounds of the season. He's currently priced at $523,800 with an average of $134. Break even of 41 and faces the Bulldogs, the Crows and the Suns in the next three games. Now, this might not come as a surprise to some, but... Adam Trelaw was GWS's number one disposal winner last year. Uh, he is currently leading the exact same stat in 2014. He's ranked fifth overall in disposals per game, so he's averaging 30. He's averaging sixth in clearances per game, which is 7.3. He's sixth in the, in the competition in contested possessions per game as well with 15.3. That's half of his disposals are contested. Sixth in tackles per game with an average of eight. Seventh for inside 50s, which is 5.7. And just to put it simply, I think we're just we are really going to see the next A grade of this competition. He is going absolutely crazy. And if you think about it, what makes him so such a great point of difference is he's only owned by four thousand people in Super Coach competition. Uh, if, if you've got him, congratulations because that that is a bona fide win. He is going great guns. But the question is. Is he going to sustain this? Is this going to continue? Are we going to see what what Jack Stephen produced last year and what Tom Liberatore did and really affirm themselves as must-have next-generation premium midfielders? Yeah, well, he... I think he's performed in two out of the three games. The one down was against St Kilda, of course, in yeah. their, their loss. But the fact that he came out and performed so well against a quality side in Sydney, mm. who were very highly defensive, I think says to me that uh, he's going to be the next up-and-comer and the next one to watch out, to be on the edge of the cusp of being a premium. So, Yeah, definitely. And, and with uh, GWS, and I, I said this about, um, well, I didn't say it, but it was in there, in the run sheet, about Callum Ward, and he sort of stepped into this captaincy of this gun side. And Trelaw is just one of those guns. And, and he has a lot of help from a lot of other guns. And they're just going to keep going. And they are going to actually... They're just producing yeah. guns everywhere, this team. And yeah. they are going to be a very good team this year. And they are, and look, Trelaw, I, I, I want to jump on him as badly but as But can you trust player. him? Is, is there... I think the element there is that there is still an element of risk with him, which is perhaps why there isn't more people. Mm. I mean, you think after... I mean, look, he scored against St... Was it the second game against St. Yeah. Kilda? He scored in the 70s. So he went from scoring 130 plus to scoring below 80. Yeah. But then on the weekend, he's bumped up again. That was against Melbourne. So we, we're seeing three different sides from at the moment. I think I'm, I'm holding off. I, I'm going to say no at the moment. Yeah, I think at the price, I would say no. Um, yeah. Too many Too others expensive. around him that have got yep. bigger ceilings and upside yeah. and consistency. He's a Absolutely. point of difference. Get on him. Yep, and the next segment we're coming up to is a new one, which is titled Forward Pressure. And, of course, we're looking at uh, those sort of three players, the three or four players that um, a lot of people have in their last forward spot that are causing a lot of headaches. Yeah. Those players, Gary Rowan... Impey and Kennedy Harris. As we said, Ambrose is out for the next couple of weeks. Lewis Taylor is another option. He, he's only one, he's 130,000 at the moment, so you yeah. can make a bit of coin there off Rowan. But I think you just have to ride ride this one out. And um, I mean, Impey's not in the vest, but he's not scoring well. Um, but he's still scoring better than the other two combined, really. He, he scored more points than what JKH and, and Rowan did on the weekend. So, and he had a pretty poor game. If you haven't got Louis Taylor, Taylor, if you haven't got Louis Taylor, do what I'm doing this week and downgrade Gary Rowan yep. to Louis Taylor. At least then you get about 39,000, yep. 40K, um, and you'll be able to bank a bit of money there and get on a genuine cash cow. Yep. That's what I did last week. And this week I, uh, I downgraded uh, Jack Grimes for Coldashney 
in the uh, hopes of next week getting in a premium training out MP. So that's also something you can do. I banked around 300 grand. So that's definitely something you can do there definitely. if you need to. Now, we're having a look at Unique of the Week this week. And uh, who is our Unique of the Week this oh, week? No, Ooh. none other than my man, Mr. Jackson Merritt. <laughs> 332,100. Oh, I lick my lips when I think of that, man. Delicious. Does, it, does that sound weird? No, he's tasty. You Not can't tasty, use Bruce's sorry. word. That's probably uh, he's got an average of 103 at the moment. He is killing it. Uh, he's got uh, His next three is Frio, St. Kilda, and Collingwood. And uh, look, I think that Essendon being the gun team that they are this year, I think he's just going to continue picking up because he's got all the confidence in the world. Why, why do you think he's gone from... I mean, almost being irrelevant last year to all of a sudden bursting on the scene in the first three rounds. 100% confidence. He's not actually that good. That's the thing. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I watched him on the weekend. No, look, they're, they're, he's efficient. That's he the is, thing. He yeah. is. He is very efficient with his kicking and his, his handballing. He is good. He looks like he's got a good footy brain. Um, whether he can continue sort of finding the ball is, is is another thing. But I think as long as Essendon have confidence in him and keep playing him. Then he's gonna he's gonna kill well, it. You've got some stats. Yes, he's averaging twenty four disposals so far this year and seventy eight percent efficiency. Yep. So that in itself, I think, tells a tale of, as to why he's scoring so well. And if you can maintain that, um, well then. Well, he was only averaging eleven disposals last yeah, year, exactly. and he, he's made that move to the midfield now. Yeah. Um, and I think that they're only going to give can continue playing in further. Mm. He also he also ranks in the top ten in the AFL for both. Average marks per game, nine, and average inside 50s. So that's... Uh, that's where the super coach points yeah. are at too. And yeah. especially with that Easy kicking points. efficiency, it is fantastic. But yeah. moving on to tweet of the week. Uh, we've got three tweets here to, uh, to answer and, and read out. Thank you to everyone um, for sending in your tweets. Make sure every Tuesday night we put it out there. Hashtag SCP show. Um, send us your tweets and we will... Uh, we will answer them, either on here or we will on, on Twitter. Yep. And I'll be kicking it off. Uh, I've got one here from Keaton Marin, Keats21. Thanks for your tweet, mate. Uh, he says, my forward six to eight spot are going nowhere fast. Should I trade one now to Taylor or wait for better options in upcoming weeks? Now, I think it uh, depends really what players he's got. But if he does have players like Garrow Rowan, MP and Harris, which we spoke of before, I think probably if you've got Rowan more so than those other two, you'd be looking at um, probably better off trading uh, to someone like a Taylor, yep. like I'm doing, banking some cash. At least with Taylor, you know he's a genuine cash cow. We saw Rich injuries now on the weekend, unfortunately, which rules him out for the rest of the season. I think that now works in Taylor's favour. He's gonna get more opportunity to run through the middle. And that in itself, I think uh, you should probably yeah, consider is, getting him. That in. is very good advice and I have Hank, I can't pronounce your last name, Hank, but get me on Twitter and, and tell me how to and I'll definitely endeavour to get that one working. But uh, really, pretty simple. Keep or trade Swan? Mm. Now, I know we always say stand by your premiums, but you've got to get rid of him. You've got to offload Dane Swan. He's lost you some cash already. He's only going to continue losing more value. And I think while you have what's left, you've got to take that for what it's worth. He injury interrupted pre-season. It is showing in his fitness and his form at the moment. He's, he's dropping sitters, he's skewing kicks. He's not having any impact on the Collingwood side at the moment. And um, you know it's frustrating to see a star of his calibre sort of drop off so dramatically. Um, but he will get better. But I think now in terms of super coach, there's, there's no room for romance. Offload him and bring in someone who is in form, who is scoring well, and um, and just be done with it. And you know what? When Swanee does hit rock bottom and he starts that, that form rise again, yeah. just bring him back in for a much cheaper price. That That is that yeah. is a, that's something I will endorse. One thing that stood out to me the other week was, I think it was Buckley, I think he was on, on the couch, and they interviewed him about this very issue about Swan and why he was played more forward, more so than in previous seasons, and they said he's injured. And Buckley goes, oh, no, no, no. But he kind of stuttered before he actually gave an answer. And he's, he was really adamant that he wasn't injured. He's, he's carrying something. But you can something. tell he was hiding something. He's carrying something. That wrist uh, surgery that he had in the yeah. off-season, I think it's really hampering him. He said that it was hampering the way he was going about his footy. So well, I saw, I actually saw him play, and I was telling you, you guys this mm. before the show. Um, 
Cloak was screaming at him and saying, you know, wake up, wake up. You know, and he was just plodding along. He was looking slow and tired. So there is yep. definitely something going yep. on. I think it's more than his wrists. Yep. Okay, but anyway, the next uh, tweet that we've got is from Alex Gazola, great name, uh, at Alex Gaza 25 And he has tweeted us and he said, should I trade out Corey Enright and bring in Gench? And uh, the answer to that is... Um, oh, can I oh, say it? Yes, risky. do it. Get on him three tons in a row. There is no one else contesting for the sort of role that he's playing in Adelaide. Sorry, I just stole your answer. The answer is oh, yes. <laughs> so, um, what she said. Repeat and, that verbatim. Yeah, and just uh, just replay that in my voice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, look, he, he's killing it, isn't he? And uh, the question begs whether he's going to maintain it, but screw it, he's doing it for now. Um, Corey Enright. He's what forty five by now, roundabout. Yeah, he's pushing fifty at the moment. Yeah, yeah. so he's yeah. Uh, he's quite old. So probably is he going to come back this week? Not good. Well, teams tomorrow night. Mm. I guess we'll find out. But at the moment, I'd, I'd say no. But um, but just to wrap things up uh, for the show tonight. Um, now you've said you're trading. Who are you trading to? I'm trading out uh, the ringer Matt Joyce, aka uh, Rowan, <laughs> to <laughs> to Louis Taylor. Uh, banking a bit of cash there. I do need it uh, looking forward um, for my future trade. So doing that. Your trades? Oh, I said I, I traded Jack Grimes for Cole Dashney. I'm considering trading Polek for Josh Kelly simply because everyone's got... I know I know it's a stupid trade, but... Oh. Look, it sucked in. I only did one trade last week. I've only done one trade this week. Don't do it. But I still bank about 50 grand for it. Well, um, I yeah. am contemplating offloading Daisy Thomas uh, down to Josh Kelly and grabbing that cash so I can go bang bang Enjoy. in a couple of weeks with a few premiums once those uh, those younger guys bottom out. Yeah. But that's pretty much for this week. Thanks to Cracker Wines for sponsoring us this episode. Um, we will see you back next week ahead of round five. Hope you do well on the weekend. Yeah, Cracker Wine.